Good morning all. Today I'm going to build whatever is in this envelope. So let's open it. And we've got a kit. It's an electronics kit, a very interesting shaped printed circuit board there. So inside this bag is, and you can probably see it shining there, out you come, it's the crap badge. Now this is the crap badge made by David Watts. David Watts is an electronics YouTuber. Um, he's been doing electronics all for quite a while. I've been watching David for quite a while. I'll certainly put links to David's channel and possibly also a video where he assembles uh, his crap badge down in the description below. But uh, yeah, in this video, I'm going to make up the crap badge. This is uh, the circuit diagram. We have 555. It's actually a CMOS 555, which makes sense because the two chips on here are also CMOS. We've got a 4017, uh, which is a, this one, a one of 10. Uh, well, it's a counter and decoder in one chip. We've also got a 4027, which looks like it's a JK flip-flop. Not sure if it's dual or single. We've got 10 outputs to well, 10 LEDs, but there are actually 20 LEDs. And then we choose, so in effect, this is multiplex. We've got um, 10 by two matrix here, and we switch either side of the LED matrix on by pulling the cathodes of the LEDs to ground through an MPN transistor. That's got a 10K resistor on the base. Uh, three volt battery there. Yeah, that's this um, CR2032 holder. Now there's something odd going on around the 555, but let me just take a look at these other sheets. So that's um, a silkscreen printout, which actually tells you more than the silkscreen does. That doesn't tell you a lot, but this shows that there's the 4017, there's the 555. The values of the components um, doesn't give me an anode cathode thing on the LED, so I'll have to check that. And here we've got, oh, this is the reverse side. Now there are two pads here, and if I look at the circuit diagram, they appear to be marked with X's there. And that's a resistor between pin, um, what was it, seven, I think, and six. That's right, seven and six. So that's one of the resistors that sets the speed of the 555. And David's chosen to do it with an LDR. So I'm guessing by changing the light level, it changes the rate at which uh, this thing flashes around all of the LEDs. But anyway, let's just get stuck in. Let's start building the crap badge. So the 4017 is on the front. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit the 555 first and then put the battery holder on. Um, I'll also need the LDR because that's part of the 555's timing uh, components. And then try and put an LED on pin 3, the output of the 555, just to make sure that it's um, oscillating. Okay, let's try and solder that on. So I think I might just make some flux available um, for the flux kiddies so that um, we stand a good chance of getting this thing on. Okay, let's pre-tin one of those pads. Yeah, this tip's pretty big, but let's just, just do this corner pad. That's pin five, I believe. Right, let's use these tweezers just to put that on there, put that pin down. That looks pretty good. I think I can uh, stick the other pins of that chip on now. Let's do this corner one. Yeah, this tip is a bit larger than I would really like. But it's not too bad. Actually, it'd be probably sim simpler to work along these in a row. Yeah, it's quite hard to apply a sensible amount of solder to these. We'll have a close-up look at this in a minute. Oh yeah, this is one big soldering iron tip. Okay, let's take a look at that. So I've cleaned that up a little bit and that looks absolutely fine. So let's get um, the necessary components on there so that this thing will oscillate and then we'll try and get an LED on there and make sure that we at least have a clock. We want uh, this resistor here, which is VCC to seven, otherwise known as eight to seven. 
that's 3.2k. Now I've got a feeling David wrote 3.2k. I think he meant 3.3k. That's fine. We need the 4.7 microfarad. That doesn't appear to have a polarity marking on it, so it's probably um, a multi-layer ceramic. And the 0.01 here on pin 5 is just a stabilizing capacitor for the control voltage. I've never found you need that, but I'll put it on anyway. So let's get those uh, three components on. I'm also going to need the LDR here because that does make up the resistor between uh, pins 6 and 7. Right, the 3K3 goes here. Yeah, this tip is a really a little bit big for this job. It is a bit tricky because it just doesn't have any, well, fineness to it. It's a big slab of metal. Yes, this resistor here, the uh, 332, so 3K3, is about the size of a grain of sand. Um, but I've got one side on, so let's get the other side on. Now I've got to work out what I've used and what I haven't. So that was the 3K3 resistor. Let's chuck that on the floor. We got 10Ks here. These are for the bases of the two transistors. Now this is a big looking capacitor. So that's got to be that 4.7 microfarad timing capacitor. So let's get that on next. Where does the 4.7 microfarad go? It goes over oh, there. Okay, just to the left hand side of the chip. So let's put this giant size, oh that's tipped down a bit, let's tip it down back again. Is it on? I think it's on. Right, let's get some solder on this side. Okay, let's take a close look at that. This soldering iron uh, does seem very nice, but it's just that this tip is too big for what I'm doing. I want to get a really fine point tip, so I'm going to go back to the TS. 100 for the remainder of this because it's all turning into a bit of a mare. The clock output of the 555 pin 3 then goes through a 10k to ground. I'm not entirely sure why he's done that. I don't think I'm going to bother with that because a CMOS output should pull hard to both um, rails. So I don't quite know what that's for. And so let's just try it without. I think I've got enough components uh, around the 555 to make that work. I've soldered the LDR onto these pads here. I guess you're intended to have it coming out of the sides. So I'm just now going to solder on this um, battery holder and we can put a battery in it and see whether it oscillates. I've put uh, an LED with a 100 ohm resistor which should be fine at 3 volts. Uh, across pins 14 and 8 of uh, the CMOS CD4017. I believe those are the right pins Yes, I'm looking on my screen, 14 and 8 clock and ground. So if we put a battery in here, uh, what's the best way to do this? Like that. Oh, that's interesting. That's really tragically dim. Does the LDR, yes, it does affect the speed. You can see it's strobing there. So that's probably about 20 hertz or so. Slow it down by covering it, making it really dark. But yeah, that's really dim. So we've got a problem with that, or is that going to be fine? Three volts, that should be really bright on a on a green LED. I'm not sure about that. Apply some flux in readiness for the 4017 and get that soldered on. I suppose before I do that, I should take the battery out. Oh, that's on the floor. Right, let's get the uh, 4017 on. I noticed uh, once I got the 4017 on that pin 1 is one of the uh, 10 outputs. 8 of course is ground. And uh, yeah, we've got a flashing on the LED. A fair bit brighter than it was when it was only on the output of the 555. Of course it's being affected by the LDR if I get some light on there. So that's only a 1 in 10 flash. So you'd expect it to be just brief like that if I cover that up. It's much slower and actually a much longer pulse because the clock has slowed down. So that all looks pretty promising. I think it's time to get the other chip on. Yeah, it's very interesting. This 4027 doesn't actually have an indent cut in the edge. Neither does it have a dot. So I'm really going purely, oh, better check what that is, um, purely on the uh, lettering on the top. But that's not, doesn't inspire a huge amount of confidence. Which means putting on these uh, two transistors, these two 10K base resistors, these two 470K 
uh, current limiting resistors which limit the current through the LEDs. So let's get all that lot on. And then I can attach a couple of LEDs and they should light up. Wow, David, I think, although some of these components are 0805s, some of them are very much smaller. I don't know, these 0603s, they are very tiny and hard to work with, but they're all on. Uh, if I put one LED on, well, we should see something. It's the next day because I ran out of light and uh, so I had to leave it until today. Now I've put one LED on there, one of the ones that David supplied, and you can see that it's working. Fantastic. That's not even soldered on, by the way. It's just sitting there. I'm not quite sure how it's sitting there, but it is and it's working. Now, David supplied 20, I think, yellow 0805s uh, LEDs, but I want to make this a Christmassy crap badge. In fact, I'll make it a Christmasy crap badge. I'll explain more about that later. Um, and in my last post bag, I got some red and green 0805s. I'm just going to switch out your yellows for my red and greens and start adding light emitting diodes. The first darkness absorbing green diode is on there. Let's try gluing it on. Oh yeah, that's worked rather well. Let's glue to the side. Well, I think that's soldered on, certainly flashing. Now here's an interesting artifact. We've got it flashing twice, once bright and once dim. So my guess is that um, bright is when the transistor is turned on, pulling it to ground and dim is when it isn't. It's an odd effect, but we'll see how that pans out when I get some more LEDs on there. I was concerned that I wouldn't be able to tell the red LEDs from the green LEDs, but ironically, the red LED has a visible green bar from the top, the green one doesn't. Uh, so I should be able to tell the difference. So let's stick that one on and press it onto the pads. It is just lighting up with no solder. I think some solder would make it stick a bit better. Interestingly, now that I've got the first of the red LEDs on there, I'm not getting a double pulse from the green LED. I'm getting a very bright flash, but I'm getting a little double pulse on the red LED. It's quite dim, but it's there. Maybe this will all go away when I get all the LEDs on. Perhaps I should just finish this project. I have to say, I'm really enjoying soldering these LEDs on with the power on. And funnily enough, I'm not getting any tombstoning. I'm not soldering or tinning one pad. I'm actually placing the LED and then just soldering it. I'm getting on fine. Um, most of the LEDs are, well, most of this side are on, but I'm just gonna try something. Um, this bag, which would have been a post bag, but now isn't, contains two containers of flux. I think they came from Alice. They're two different ones. And what I'm hoping is that they will be sort of sticky and gluey and I can just dab it on, stick the component into the sticky glue and then just solder it from both sides without messing about. Let's try it. I'm always keen to experiment. This one is XY5 and this one is PD10. Now this one's got the consistency of Vaseline, which looks about right. This one is sort of bright and shiny. I'm going to try both. Uh, may not work, but it might. This green LED from the top has no real identifying marks, so I'm having to just try it either way around. That's clearly the right way around because it's flashing if I press it down. Now, can I solder it? I'm having to clean my iron between every single soldering to get it bright enough to take the solder. Okay, now it has. Can I solder it without it tombstoning because of that viscosity of that um, flux? Yeah, I'm hoping that's going to work. Let's solder this side. I'm having difficulty with this board in the sense that the tinning on these pads just doesn't seem to be sucking the solder in quite as 
quickly as normal and I'm just wondering whether this has been tinned with a HASL yeah is it hot air solder leveling I think it means the Hazel um, lead free now if this is lead free solder I do find that they just don't mix as well as lead, leaded solder with leaded solder so maybe that's how it's been coated but that stuck down it didn't tombstone that was good let's try this red one here I've got a little blob of solder on the very fine tip of the iron oh yes that's soldered quite nicely and with the flux there and sticky and goopy the component just doesn't tombstone and you can solder it almost conventionally right let's have a close-up look at that here it is with half the LEDs on the board you can see a little bit of breakthrough of some current that green LED at the bottom is just coming on when the other set of LEDs should be on but I think that's starting to look pretty good and I'm going to carry on with my flux glue soldering technique get the remainder of the LEDs on the other 10 I think it is and we're done the biggest problem with these green LEDs is the lack of any sort of topside marking for anode and cathode so the only way I can sort of see which is anode and cathode is to repeatedly flip them over and as I'm sure you know that is a pain in the neck when you're doing surface mount so having the power on I'm actually putting it down pressing it down actually with the cocktail stick or knife if it doesn't light up I'll flip it round, press it down again to check the polarity I'm finding that easier than looking at the markings on the device because there's nothing top side now if you're young and you find surface mount soldering really easy spare a thought for us oldies for whom vision is failing and it's much much harder I'm using three and a half reading glasses just simply to be able to see what I'm doing I can't do it when the light goes there is enough light still at the moment but this is working pretty well and I'm happy three more LEDs to go it's done but uh, just before I finish I'm going to use this flux pen which is a very low viscosity flux it's mostly isopropyl alcohol I would imagine to oh that's killed it that's killed it so there it is it's the Chris Moss version of the crap badge it uh, rotates quickly if you've got light on the LDR if I turn that away from the light and actually cover it up despite the resistance across there on my finger I think my fingers are pretty dry that rotates pretty slowly so it's a variable speed Chris Moss crap badge let's see it a bit closer up and I'll darken the LDR so that we can see all the LEDs coming on are we still getting that effect where it phantom lights the other side not too bad now is it I don't think I can see it at all now I'm just wondering whether that 555 is actually a 555 it it only says 555 on it let me get the magnifying glass there's the marking on it all I can see is 555 and possibly a 1 or some sort of line I'm not even sure it is a 7555 it might be a bipolar one because it had real difficulty sourcing current into that first LED when I had the LED on the output of it and that was with 100 ohms so are you sure you got 7555s David I have a suspicion about that so a huge thanks to David Watts for sending me one of his crap badges which is very red and green and Christmassy now and certainly check out David Watts's channel for other crap products uh, like his crap clock and the crap crickets I think I think they're also crap it's always a struggle building a surface mount project but uh, I quite enjoyed it really cheerio